Hey everyone, welcome again, and I am here visiting my good friend Fabian Evelyn from Evelyn Protective Films again. Yes, sir. You'll remember that we did a video back in February That's where we right. did a whole thing on uh, on my uh, Model X, and uh, we thought I'd come back and just have a little chit chat with him and see how things have developed. Obviously, you're in a bigger shop now. Yes, I can breathe better. You can breathe better, <laughs> and uh, you can see here we have a brand new Model Three. It's an all-wheel drive, and he's currently doing a full paint wrap or a full paint. Or paint protection film yep, wrap on that's it. That's right. Yep. Yeah, a little tongue tied there, but uh, bumper to bumper. You were just telling me offline that uh, you know things are not sitting still, right? Things are keep moving. Oh, and things are continuously moving. Continuously yeah. So moving. you know, you know, obviously we get the same questions a lot. You know, quite often, you know, what is paint protection film? What's ceramic coating? Can I put one on top of the other and stuff? So. Okay. You have an opportunity to answer some of those questions again, I figured. Yeah, so, so um, we won't spend a lot of time on it, but we'll definitely make sure that we cover as many questions as we can. So I think some of the questions we had was, um, can we put ceramic coating on first and then put paint protection film on yeah. after? No. <laughs> uh, ceramic coatings are after. So you put the paint protection film on first, mm -hmm. ceramic coating on top of the paint protection film, on top of the paint perfect combination yeah you don't want to do the other way around because right? no. it's a nightmare a nightmare <laughs> nightmare we've, we've had clients already do that um, where they went and they did the ceramic coating on top of the car first and then brought it in for the PPF and unfortunately we had to strip it and do it all over again for them so yeah just PPF first yeah, PPF first that's <laughs> awesome I think you were also mentioning too that uh, you know that I've seen you know a bit of a trend because we have quite a few model threes um, in this area here in southern Ontario people oh, yeah. have been doing you know this new stealth look which is kind of a matte finish on the ppf That's i right. think it looks pretty cool oh yeah um have you done anything like that like i, I know you mostly work with prestige films like the, That's the, right. the clear guard nano which That's is what right. i have on my car which That's is right. which is awesome by the way yeah uh we st I, i'm i'm uh i'm a lifer when I, when I stick with a company, I stick with a company. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing about being loyal. Uh, some, some, some companies I've been with, uh, you know, they have okay film, great customer service. Sometimes you gotta have both. And with Prestige, uh, they give me everything I'm looking for. So I've got great film, I got great customer service on the back end, and uh, there's a great network of uh, installers that we can all pick from each other's brains. And I mean, like it's a private group, we email, or sorry, not email, but we message each other on Facebook and stuff like that, and we keep it really, really tight and yeah. really in-house. Uh, in regards to their developments, I mean, since we did your car, they actually did another generation of film where they bumped up the adhesive a little bit more. The optical clarity is still there. I mean, what you see on the paint is what you see under, uh, on top of the film. Like, the film doesn't hide a lot. It hides a few things, but it will not hide a lot. If there's a deep scratch there, you're going to see it. If there's a nick in the paint, you're going to see it. So we got to do a lot of things to make sure that the uh, vehicle is prepped properly, that the surface, the surface is at its optimal condition so that when we install the film, it just looks beautiful. Actually, which reminds me, because I know some people have been asking, you know, what's this concept of, you know, paint correction? You really have to make sure that you have a pristine, yeah. you know, clean car. Yeah. Um, before you apply any of this stuff because it, all it does is just makes things worse, right? Absolutely. Now, there's a few things, right? Like, um, it's been a new trend. I'll say, this, I'll, I'll say it like this. It's been a recent trend probably within maybe the last year, year and a half that um, in some shops that install PPF have been polishing vehicles first and then installing the PPF whereby before it hasn't always been that way. Now with this new trend, this new change in the industry where um, folks are actually, I'm getting those phone calls, they're calling and they're asking, do you paint correct before you install the PPF? The answer is yes and no. The reason why it's yes and no is because 90% of the time, if it's a brand new vehicle, we don't have to get that deep into paint correcting if we're just doing the front end of the car. However, we're talking about Tesla. <laughs> It's a different story. I've learned with Teslas that no matter where <laughs> where the car was uh, picked up, doesn't matter what part of the dealership in Oakville, Toronto, Mississauga, wherever, yeah, it needs to be paint corrected. Yeah. So with every it's Tesla, a, do a, I get do I paint correct? Absolutely. So let me ask you this: um, mm -hmm. you know, before we started recording, you were giving me a little tour of this particular Model Three here that you're doing here uh, behind us, and it's a full paint protection film yes, like sir. every panel yes sir and you were telling me that the hardest parts of the car to do is the front fascia mm -hmm. the rear bumper yep. and the rear trunk areas Absolutely. because it's mostly compound curves right that's right and the one thing that I noticed on this car and especially on my Model X is that you're doing the front fascia with one sheet like there's no seams or anything like that mm -hmm. and you know, I've, I've seen a lot of different paint protection films done from other people. I, you know, it's not about calling out any of the people here, 
but I've seen some people put seams in them and sometimes there's little gaps and stuff. But I noticed your stuff, you, you wrap all the corners. As much as possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I don't think there's a point of installing paint protection film if you're not going to protect the leading edges. Uh, if, the, if you're going to get a rock chip, 90% of the time I've seen it, it's like you leave that gap because like sometimes it's not as it's not an, an eighth of them it's, it's really bad yeah so you leave that gap and then all of a sudden you get a rock hit right on that edge right yeah. so not every film wraps around edges um and then also with body panels moving and stuff like that sometimes you will you can get film peeling back because right. it's so it's butted in there too much but you can get the film in there enough mm -hmm. whereby you can especially with these Model 3s, there's a little bit of a gap in all the body lines. So you should be able to get the film in there enough so that there isn't any rubbing, there isn't any uh, friction or whatever the case may be. And you're able to wrap the majority of the edges. Which way do you want to be as an installer? Do you want to go the extra mile or do you just want to slap it on and call it a day? It's, it's one of those things where I think we said in the last video, clients got to get out there or potential clients have to get out there and they have to actually meet their installer they have to actually see the work and not just have that conversation over the phone or just in their shop but not see the work like come in like you came in here and we just delivered a vehicle you can walk around the car see what you see and get what you get i didn't see any seams or anything it was a phenomenal right it was a really nice job you did right. on this one i noticed on this one here that you're um, i mean you even go as far as taking the side markers off the mirrors the chrome trim yeah i mean you're not fooling around you're really no. going the extra mile no. on this one um i think it's very important to hide as many um edges as possible uh, like some, you don't want them to lift or anything. I don't right? want them to lift. Yeah. I want longevity out of it as well. Um, and I'm a nut. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. I'm a nut. Before I wouldn't really, before I wouldn't really go as far. Uh, some cars I'd probably take it easy and say, okay, that doesn't need to be removed. But then I realized there are certain things, uh, especially with these Teslas, if they can come out and you can get it out properly without damaging it, yeah. and you can put it back properly without making it look like it was, you know, destroyed or warped or whatever the case is then do it like it just it just makes the installation look that much better uh, especially with the side markers on the fenders you take those you take those little cameras out and you do it properly and you get that film right behind the camera yeah you don't see any edges you don't see any seams like it, it just makes for it a looks like a paint job i mean you would never know this ppf on that's it, right? the point yeah. right i like to wash my car i mean a lot of you that that view some of the videos yeah. and stuff i like to wash my car and the one thing that I've noticed with the ceramic coating, because I've never had it before, is that it makes the car so much easier to wash. Oh, absolutely. Like it's cut my wash time down by 50%. Oh, absolutely. It's like crazy. I, you have probably, in my opinion, one of the best ceramic coatings companies products. This is the Fine Lab. Fine Lab. Yeah. Fine Lab for me has been just like Prestige Film Technologies. The combination of customer service, product quality, and the, and the ability to be able to test out new products and stuff as they're coming out, it's phenomenal. I like the fact that with Fine Labs, they vetted me the same way Prestige Technologies vetted me, right? They wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing. I can't just say I'm a detailer and not know how to polish, polish right. paint or say that I know how to correct paint, but meanwhile, I'm like using dirty pads and my shop is a mess and I'm not, you know, <laughs> cleaning my stuff. Like, I can vouch for that. His shop is really, really clean. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it, you have to, you have to show what it is that you're saying you're able to do. The two companies that I'm working with right now for product, amazing. And back to your question, cause I went off on a rant. <laughs> Sorry guys, I just That's had okay. to give them some love. But um, ceramic coatings are brilliant. Like if you want to make sure your car is going to stay clean as long as possible, a ceramic coating is good for that. It, ease of cleaning, amazing. Depth of gloss, brilliant. When you get something that has super hydrophobicity, like we put on your car for the, we put ceramic plus on your car, yeah. top coat. And I remember I gave you like three layers of ceramic. Three, yeah, yeah, I think it was three. Yeah, was, yeah we hooked you up. <laughs> we hooked I appreciate you that, up. thank you're, you. You're really, you're really slick right now. So, uh, but I mean, it, there's, there's no other way to keep your car as clean than to put a good ceramic coating on the car, protect the front end from being damaged by rock chips and stuff like that. That's a great combination. You sent me some pictures a little while ago about this, uh, this wrap job, this vinyl wrap that you did oh, on yeah. this Model 3. Tell me about this car. Bumble 3 is what we named it. Um, this client was a really good guy, John. His vehicle, he wanted to stand out. A solid black, no doubt. Solid black uh, Model 3. Um, we went through the ringer on this thing. Like it was the first Model 3 I ever did a actual vinyl wrap on and we pulled it apart. 
brand new car and we pulled it apart. <laughs> we took off front bumper, rear bumper, took out the headlights, fog lights, we took out the grill on the front. We did everything we could to make sure that this thing looked like it was painted yellow. Yeah, it looks amazing. Oh yeah, it looks great. It looks great. <laughs> and then we topped it with Fine Labs uh, paint well, protection film and as um, one should. vinyl coating. <laughs> so the thing was slick. It's Boy, a very it unique fun. car because, you know, with Model 3, you know, I mean, there's only, what, five or six colors, two wheel styles. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, yeah. it's nice to see people trying to get out there and just personalize these cars a little bit Absolutely. more, you know, trying different yeah. colors and stuff. I'm not one for wrap jobs personally. I mean, I like the clear stuff, but yeah. I thought that yellow looked really good because it kind of reminded me of an old Ducati I used to have because it, yes. it, was, it was yellow. Yeah, and, yeah. So I just wanted to ask you about window tinting because mm -hmm. you actually surprised me because when I picked up my Model X and you had tinted the two front windows for me, yeah. I wasn't expecting to see what you did with my windows because typically what I've seen with people do when they do tinting on windows is they leave you know an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch yeah. down from the edges right. and mine looked like they just came from the factory tinted like that. Yeah. What did you call it? Shaved or yeah, something? Yeah, shave the edges. I've never shave seen that before. Edges. It takes a little bit more time to do but it's like it makes a world of difference. Wow, that, I couldn't believe it. Like oh, I, yeah. I get comments on it all the time. People ask me, like, are these windows tinted from the factory? I said, no, Fabian did it. Yeah, it's fact. It looks it's factory. right up to the edge. Right you can't even edge. tell. Yeah. So when it's a frameless window, like there's just the window and no door frame, uh -huh. uh, I find that making it like shading it right to the edge makes it look so much nicer when you open that door. Of course, right? Like even for um, uh, your Model X, like I mean. I had, I had done one window and I had gotten the micro wedge and I looked at it and I was just like, ah, I don't like it. You know, and I just backed it off and I went back at it and I just shaved it all the way through. Even the little quarter window in the front, yeah. shaved all the yeah, way through. Yeah, I know. And you do it in a way that when the window goes up and down, mm -hmm. it doesn't rub. Yeah. So you can open that window a thousand times. Well, I've had the car for a year run. now and yeah. I have to say that I have absolutely no issues with the tint whatsoever. There's no bubbles, yeah. there's no peeling edges or anything like that. It just it looks fantastic. So I I mean, if you can get it done like that, I I would say it looks it looks really good. It takes a little bit a little bit more time to do. Um, some guys try to charge more for it. I just do it standard. Speaking of which, I wanted to ask you because there's been some people uh, online trying to ask whether they should tint the, you know, the, the rest of the glass on the Model 3. Of course, the large back piece mm -hmm. and then the top piece. But especially the back one is a little bit more complicated because it's got that half tint that, that comes down. Yeah. So are you, have you done anything like that? Like if We've done, I think we've probably done about eight of them now. Okay. Yeah, we haven't been doing them a lot. But you don't do halfway down. You do the whole glass? Yeah, we either like do the whole glass or no glass. Yeah, you really got to focus. Different animal, right? Yeah, oh, and if you add too much heat, you can warp the film, number one, or Ugh. destroy the distort the film. And number two, if you add way too much heat, you can shatter that back glass in a heartbeat. <laughs> well, so, I'm glad you're doing the work and not yeah. me because you're oh, the yeah. expert, not me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I want to say thanks for uh, spending a little bit of time. Of course, we're just going into the holiday season and stuff, but I just wanted to come down and... Uh, to chat with you and see oh, how things were going definitely. and just you know give everybody a little bit of an update on what's going on and the larger shop and stuff so anyways if you'd like to talk to Fabian uh, you know I'll put a link down in the video description you give him a call and stuff and uh, what kind of bookings are you looking at now what kind of Ooh. time frames because I know you're super busy yeah we are busy and you know what before we even close out let me just thank everybody in the Model 3 Owners Club uh, Model 3 Tesla owners you guys have blown this shop up literally <laughs> from the day I did this video with Trevor the first one and the day we opened this new location in April until now we've been running and gunning so I want to just thank everybody for that that's humbling because you put me out there and I, <laughs> I, I was not even trying to be that guy on camera and you put me out there and took this quiet back behind the scenes guy to well, you know what? I'm like you. I, I stand behind the people that I believe in. And, uh, and I appreciate that. Yes, booking. We're on the last two cars of the year. Really? I'm literally going to shut down for two weeks and just relax. Good for you. Um, and unfortunately, fortunately, <laughs> we're booking into March already. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Next year. So it's been fun. So it's if you're picking fun. up your Model 3, <laughs> give them a call as soon as possible. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get in until the spring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, fun. thanks a lot, Thank buddy. You, it's nice to see you again, and have a Merry you. Christmas. Very, appreciate you. That's it. Merry thanks Christmas for watching, everybody. folks. Take we'll care. catch you on the next one. See you later.